So you probably thought that was a good jump. However, it's not biomechanically efficient. So if you're still watching, then I either made you mad or you actually want to learn. So I want you to ask yourself this question. What characteristics are synonymous to a good toe touch? Your answer may encompass some of the following terms. Above level, hyperextended, pointed toes, landing with your feet together. Now you can achieve all of these mentioned words and still not complete a biomechanically efficient jump. So I'm going to start out teaching you how to jump not how to do a jump, but rather how to vertically accelerate your body off the ground. For this, I'd like you to stand up. Yes, please get out of your chair, prop your phone up. Wait, if you're in the bathroom, don't stand up. All right, well anyways, watch what I was gonna do. Here we go, Alex. I would like you to put a metaphorical basketball in your hand and you're gonna dip and you're gonna dunk this basketball. And I'll count you out. Ready? Five, five, six, seven, eight, dip. One, two, three, four, five. So now this time I'm going to do something a little different. I would like you to dip lower. So I'd like the top of your legs to be at a 90 degree angle. So that means you're going to dip a little bit lower than you did the first time. Here we go. Ready? Five, five, six, seven, eight, dip. One, two, three, four, five. Good. So you notice that time she has a little bit more air time. So anatomically, you're stretching out your quadriceps further, much like a rubber band. So the further you stretch them out, the more energy it returns. So this is the same thing that happens in your dip. As long as you're holding that strong position when you dip, you're, and I'll show you what the strong position is. So you're dipping down and you're going to be head over shoulders, over knees, over toes with a slight arch back. That's what I call the strong position. As long as you have that position and you dip a little bit lower, you're going to get a better return on that jump. So for example, coaches, you can yell until you're blue in the face that you need your cheerleaders to get their feet back together. It's never going to happen because they don't have enough air time to where they can get their feet back together. As well, they're going to be scared to roll their hips. If they roll, if they roll their hips and they're not high enough off the ground, they're going to land on their heels, they're going to land on their back, yada, yada, yada. You don't have a good jump. So now that you know how to jump higher, let's show you how to use your arms to engage your leg muscles even more. What? How is this possible? So the swing in your jump isn't just for looks, and I'm not even sure the person who decided to put the swing in a jump even knows what the purpose is. As an example, when you swing your arms down, you should swing down with purpose and speed towards the ground so that it adds a downward pressure to your quads. This will once again add height to your vertical jump. After you've swung your arms, you need to stop them in a solid T motion. And I'm going to show you what this is going to do. Here we go, my demo. Five, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Good. So stopping in a T motion, this will give you a slight float and it'll begin to bring your upper body to a stop so that you can use the potential energy to make your legs continue upwards without using your muscles. When you do pull your legs, think about pulling through your ankles. And I say through your ankles because that'll help concentrate on pointing your toes. And so now that you can jump higher and you can visualize when to pull your legs up, but this whole rolling my hips under messes everything up because I could fall. Yes, you could fall. And scientifically speaking, you will fall if you don't do the first portion correctly. And that's the science behind it all. So you understand the scientific process, but still need some applicable knowledge. So let's show you some drills I like to use. Now you've probably done these drills before, but never were explained how to apply it to the skill. So for the first one, you're going to sit on the ground, tell your cheerleader to actually arch her back and try to lift her toes off the ground through your ankles. Okay. See, it's not possible because it's not an anatomically correct position. Now I'd like you to hunch your back and lift your ankles off the ground. So now, good. Do it a couple times. Now you can do this as many reps as you would like. And now keep in mind 
This may take you several practices just to master the first reel. Just stay consistent with it. Okay, let me show you one more. Now you need to find a partner. You're going to stand behind them. You're going to grab them by the waist or just above the waist. You can stick your arms out and you can lean forward a little bit. Now turn around and say, never let me go, Jack. Never let me go. Near, far, away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now I'm going to show you another drill that I like to use. You're going to need a partner for this one. So grab your jumper by the waist and you're going to assist her as she jumps off the ground and keep control of the body. If you just throw up in the ground and let go of her, it can be dangerous. So do just as follows. Ready? Five, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Good. As you notice, my jumper jumps off the ground, she hits a strong T and then pulls her ankles up behind her T. You don't want to get to where you swing behind your body and then snap and then hit your toe touch in the front. And you see that commonly. Well, that won't allow you to get the proper air time as well as it's not going to really allow you to get your hips underneath of you and get your feet back together at the same time. Unless, of course, maybe you have an assisted uh, floor like a spring floor or something of that nature. But this is the biomechanically correct way to do things. So now I'm going to show you a few examples of incorrect and correct jumps. And now for our first example. We have a short dip, which will not stretch her quadriceps out far enough. And then her arms are behind her body. This will not stop her body and give her the appropriate potential energy. Notice that the arms swing behind the body and then snap to the front. That's not what we're looking for. And the last part we're not looking for is the fact that she has a completely straight back right here. So that means if her back is completely straight and she doesn't have a hunch in her back, her hips will not get underneath her body. So even though she has the flexibility to do this, her hips not being underneath her body prevent her from having a hyperextended toe touch. And then because she didn't dip appropriately, she doesn't have enough time to get her feet back together. And now for our second example, we have a cheerleader with plenty of power and plenty of strength. A pretty decent jump could be a little bit lower but the swinging of the arms so you'll notice that her arms actually go in a circle so she never stops her upper body to take advantage of that potential energy so she has to use her muscles the entire way to get that hyperextended toe touch which the hyperextended toe touch is achieved because she is tucking her hips underneath her body. Now, since she swung her arms in a circle, she didn't get that appropriate snap back down because she doesn't have the proper height, and her feet can never quite make it all the way back together. For our third example, I will show you a few band-aids that have happened throughout this cheerleader's life. One is that a spring floor has taught her to jump and push off the floor to get higher instead of using the appropriate dip. So, short dip. So no return out of the, the quadriceps being stretched out. And then because a coach more than likely told her that if you put your T in more of a low V position, your jump will look higher. Instead, she never learned how to tuck her hips underneath her body. So she's been band-aided instead of tucked correctly. And obviously there's no way she's going to have enough time to get her feet back together.
So here's an example, coaches, of band-aiding the look of a jump instead of focusing on the actual biomechanics behind it. And now for our fourth example, I'm going to show you a very unique situation. The cheerleader does not get the appropriate dip. She swings behind her body. However, she can still give the crowd the appearance that she has hyperextended toe touch because she has actually stretched her hip joints out over time to bring her legs out to the side instead of learning how to roll her hips under. So you can notice that she has a really hyperextended joint actually in this position as opposed to say this cheerleader here who brings her legs slightly to the front and rotates her hips under very nicely. So even though this does appear to be a hyperextended toe touch, the legs out to the side can be damaging to your hips and I strongly suggest that you do not do it that way. So now you've mastered these drills and you've practiced them time and time again and you're ready to move on. So while doing this, still keep in your mind what you should be doing every step of the way. The strong T, the pulling your ankles up, the rolling your hips under, and catching that air time so you can snap your feet back together. And here's a few examples. All right, so now we've seen some inefficient jumps. So let's focus on a few things that we can do better. Our jumper dips appropriately. She starts to stand up. She hits that strong T, stopping her upper body. And think of this as slamming on the brakes in your car. And as the car stops, your body will continue to move. Well, the same thing happens to the jumper's legs. They continue to move. And now the jumper can focus more on stopping her legs in the appropriate position as opposed to using so much energy to pull them up. So now she stopped them right where she wants them, and then she can get them back together in plenty of time, and then focus on what she's going to do to absorb her body through the floor. Ready, five, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. So now that you've seen that jump in real time, let's slow it down. So Alex goes through the motions, she swings down hard, it's a very hard swing, and then she gets the dip just above where I probably want her to be, and her arms come slightly behind her body. So this is a vast improvement from the very first jump she did at the beginning of the day. So her arms are slightly behind her, so that's going to slow her down a little bit, but all in all you'll see that her feet are actually starting to come up because she's held that strong T. And now she can just focus on when to stop her legs. And then her feet will come back together. And now she can work on absorbing. Also, don't forget to like this video. video this video. Oh, it's so close, man. Daggone it. Please share this video with anyone that enjoys learning about the science behind cheerleading. Be sure to subscribe to catch the upcoming videos on the front hurdler, Pike and connected. Jobs.